Morning, everybody. It's sunrise. Uh, at least it was uh, a couple minutes ago. Glad you're here. It is a day and brisk 37 degrees here in uh, beautiful West Haven, Utah. Uh, sitting here on my front porch with y'all, and uh, I'll tell you, my fingers are freezing. So um, we'll uh, we'll see if uh, we can get some some blood uh, blood flow back there again. You know, so. I hope you have your cup of coffee uh, and that you've uh, got everything that you need um, for your morning. Uh, that you're off to a great resurrection day. I'm going to enjoy the rain. <clears throat> uh, how about uh, one more song? I know people are still dialing in, and maybe, maybe um, by now all the audio is, uh, is working. <clears throat> there was a button I needed to push that I've never had to push before, so. One day when heaven was filled with his praises, one day when sin was as black as could be, Jesus came forward to be born of a virgin, 
Welcome on board, my example is he. The word became flesh and the light shined among us. Glory revealed, living he loved me. Dying he saved me, buried he carried my sin far away. Rising he justified, freely forever. One day he's coming, oh glorious day, oh glorious day. One day they led him up Calvary's mountain. One day they nailed him to die on a tree. Suffering anguish, despised and rejected. Bearing our sins, my Redeemer is He. The hand that healed nations stretched out on a tree and took the nails for me. Living, He loved me. Dying, He saved me. Buried, He carried my sin far away. Rising, He justified freely forever. One day he's coming, oh glorious day, oh glorious day. One day the grave could conceal him no longer. One day the stone rolled away from the door. Then he arose over death he had conquered. Now is ascended, my Lord evermore. Death could not hold him, the grave could not keep him from rising again. Living he loved me, dying he saved me, buried he carried my sin far away. Rising he justified, freely forever. One day he's coming, oh glorious day, oh glorious day, glorious day. One day the trumpet will sound for his coming, one day the skies with his glories will shine. Wonderful day, my beloved one bring me. My Savior Jesus is mine. Living, He loved me. Dying, He saved me. Buried, He carried my sin far away. Rising, He justified freely forever. One day, He's coming, oh glorious day. Oh, glorious day, glorious day, oh, glorious day. Amen. <clears throat> so I know, um, that through the week I've been uh, sharing some things online um, each day of uh, of uh, the, the Passion Week <clears throat> a little bit, uh, so uh, so we can all kind of stay dialed into what was going on in Jesus's life uh, during that last week. <clears throat> and as you've been reading, you may have noticed something that's kind of always bothered me a little bit. Uh, I'm not sure that I fully understand it, but um, there are a lot of things I don't ever expect to fully understand. <clears throat> but um, let me read a few verses uh, this morning um, to see if uh, together we can identify uh, the issue. Maybe it's something that's bothered you as well. Mark chapter 16, uh, verses 10 through 14. Mary Magdalene went and told those who had been with him and who were mourning and weeping. When they heard that Jesus was alive and that she had seen him, they did not believe it. After Jesus appeared in a different form to two of them while they were walking in the country. 
These returned and reported to the rest, but they did not believe them either. Later Jesus appeared to the eleven as they were eating. He rebuked them for their lack of faith and their stubborn refusal to, to believe those who had seen him after he had risen. Okay, let's go over to Luke 24, uh, verses 4 through 12. <clears throat> While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He is risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee. The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. Then they remembered his words. When they came back from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and to all the others. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and, uh, and the others with them who told this to the, disciple, to the apostles. But they did not believe the women, because their words seemed to them like nonsense. Peter, however, got up and ran to the tomb. Bending over, he saw the strips of linen lying by themselves, and he went away, wondering to himself what had happened. One more passage. Luke 24, uh, 38 to 41, just a, a little bit lower in that chapter. Why are you troubled and why do doubts still rise in your minds? Look at my hands and feet. It is I myself. Touch me and see. A ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see I have. When he said this, he showed them his hands and feet. And while they still did not believe it because of joy and amazement, he asked them, Do you have anything here to eat? Now, I don't know if you see what I see uh, in, in here. Those who had spent the most time with Jesus had the hardest time believing his resurrection. I wrote earlier this week, um, uh, I forget which day, I guess it was probably Saturday's um, devotional thought, was that the enemies of Jesus absolutely remembered and believed what Jesus said about his resurrection. That's why they wanted a guard posted outside the tomb. That, that deceiver, is uh, his followers are going to do something. We want to make sure that it doesn't happen. His enemies remembered, but his closest friends seemed not to. For three years, these men had been with Jesus day and night. They had never really been apart. They had been witnesses to everything that he ever said or did in those three years. If anyone in the world could believe that Jesus had defeated death, it should be these people. They had seen Jesus do so many incredible things for so many. He'd fed thousands of people on provisions that were enough for one or two people. He changed water into wine. He caused the blind to see again after lifetimes of darkness. Lame people, uh, paralyzed people ran and jumped and danced after they had encountered Jesus. He restored power and vitality uh, to withered limbs. The eleven saw him change um, the unfeeling, rotting skin of lepers and the soft, sensitive skin like a baby. He had turned stormy, wind-tossed seas into glassy, smooth waters. He had control of the trees and the animals. Uh, he unlocked the strong chains of demons from the hearts, minds, and bodies of those who had suffered under them for so long. And to top it all off, he had brought people back from the dead. They were obviously dead on the way to the cemeteries. There was not anything that Jesus had not shown his control over. He demonstrated his power over every conceivable area of life, over nature, over the body, over demons, and death. All of those things bowed to his authority. The disciples had been there. They had seen it all. They had seen his power and authority. So I'll ask, why didn't they believe? Why couldn't they believe? It wasn't for lack of knowing the plan, either. <clears throat> Jesus spent a great deal of time telling the eleven disciples what would take place. He didn't want them to be caught unaware during all the turmoil at the end of his life. Through his ministry, he told them again and again and again what was going to have to take place. Time after time, Jesus referred to his coming betrayal, death, and resurrection. He had been warning them of his eventual betrayal for some time. In Mark 8, 31 and 32, uh, we read that he then began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders, chief priests, and teachers of the law, and that he must be killed, and after three days 
rise again. He spoke plainly about this, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. Jesus made it clear, this is what's going to happen. The disciples had heard the Pharisees ask him for a sign as a proof of his power and authority from God. And Jesus replied that the only sign they were going to get was the sign of Jonah. Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of a huge fish. The Son of Man will be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. They had heard Jesus tell the Sadducees about the dead rising. Have you not read in the book of Moses, in the account of the bush, how God said to him, I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. He is not the God of the dead, but of the living. You are badly mistaken. Jesus taught that there was life after death. Resurrection was not impossible. <clears throat> the disciples had a, a, a lot of difficulty understanding what Jesus was talking about. I suppose we would as well. It's not the natural flow. At Jesus' transfiguration, three of the disciples, Peter, James, and John, are with him. They are told by a voice that they need to listen to Jesus. The voice then says that they should not um, tell anyone uh, what they have seen until the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. They kept the matter to themselves, discussing what rising from the dead meant. Uh, over in Mark chapter 9, uh, Jesus says to them, The Son of Man is going to be betrayed into the hands of men. They will kill him, and after three days he will rise. But they did not understand what he meant, and they were afraid to ask him about it. As the day approached, Jesus emphasized his plan more often. The Son of Man would be betrayed into the hands of the Gentiles in Jerusalem, would be mocked, flogged and killed, and that he would come to life again after three days' time. This is not, not new information. It's not like Jesus said this just once and then never spoke about it again, like, oh yeah, I got lost somewhere in their memory. Jesus emphasized this plan. So, why don't they believe? They had no reason to disbelieve anything Jesus ever said. He wasn't a liar. He hadn't done anything to break their trust in him. They, they had found Jesus to be incredibly trustworthy. All that he had said or promised had come true. He had delivered on all counts. There was nothing that Jesus had promised that had not yet come true. <coughs> in Luke 5, uh, Jesus tells Simon Peter to try his nets a little deeper out in the lake as he's fishing. Uh, he, Peter was not yet a follower of Jesus. Even though Peter really didn't know much about Jesus, he didn't question the suggestion. He threw the net out. And so when they did that, the nets began to fill, the nets began to break, the boats began to sink because there were so many fish. What reason did Peter have to listen to him? He didn't know anything about Jesus. He had no reason to place any trust in him at all. He hadn't seen Jesus do anything except maybe teach a little bit. Peter and Jesus had a very close relationship in those three years. In Luke 22, Jesus says that Peter will deny that he knows Jesus three times before the morning. Peter can't accept that. He, he won't believe that it's true. He pledges his undying loyalty to Jesus. But when the rooster crowed the next morning as the words, I don't know the man, left his lips for the third time, Peter realized that Jesus had spoken the truth again. See, with all the things that uh, the disciples had seen Jesus do, and all the things they had heard Jesus say, you would wonder why we find them on the third morning, not sitting outside the tomb. Why are they, why are they not there in the gar uh, by, at, by, at the garden tomb, um, waiting for their teacher, waiting for their friend? Instead, they're inside a dark room with the door bolted, jumping at every sound on the street outside. Now, to be fair, we have the benefit of having all the facts written down for us. <clears throat> we have a record of what Jesus said and did. We can flip back to the black and white words. We can see uh, the history unfolding. Our minds have been opened, and we can see the truth in the scriptures. We have a great record of all that Jesus did, although it's not a, a totally exhaustive list. John says that if every one of the things that Jesus did were written down, that the whole world would not have enough room for all the books that would be written. But we can still believe. 
but why do we still doubt? We get to see the power of Jesus today. We see the power of God in our lives. He is not limited just to the time of the disciples. We still see Jesus having authority over nature. Long droughts have ended with just right amount of rain. People who have struggled with serious illnesses or disease have been healed and have gone on to live uh, normal, productive lives when there seemed to be no hope before. <laughs> We've seen great physical needs met when it was thought to be impossible as God's people work through the power of the Spirit. We've seen comfort and encouragement in the lives of the depressed and the lonely that could only come from God. We've seen strength and boldness of the Spirit in the lives of those who were formerly scared and weak. We know that He has power and authority over sin, over situation, over death. We have seen Him defeat death in His own life. Paul writes, Death, where is your victory? Death, where is your state? See, Jesus defeated it in the tomb. We no longer have any reason to fear death. Why don't we believe? Our God is not the God of the dead, but He's the God of the living. He cares for us. He's involved in everyday life. He's concerned about the things that concern us. He loves us. This morning, can you believe? As we go to the tomb and see that spot empty where He was laid down, can you believe that he is risen? And can you believe everything that that resurrection means for you? Millions of people for 2,000 years have believed. Can you? Why look for the living among the dead? He's risen. Matthew 28 says, Go quickly. Tell his disciples. He has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now, I've told you. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. He has risen. The tomb is empty. There's no other explanation for it. You look at all the evidence, all the possibilities, all of the theories, and the only thing that makes any sense is that Jesus actually, truly did come back from the dead of his own power because of his love for you and for me. It is a great day. We may be stuck uh, at home, sort of stranded and isolated. <clears throat> Church buildings are empty. Church parking lots, by and large, are empty. The tomb is empty. We have a Savior who loves us and who did everything in his power um, to make sure that we could be with him forever. <clears throat> I'm, uh, I'm really glad we've had a chance to be together this morning. Um, hopefully uh, you've been able to hear and see everything. You know, you've seen the, the sun and the clouds um, uh, beautiful in the sky behind me. <clears throat> I'm, uh, I'm hopeful uh, that very soon we can be together again in person. Uh, I'm praying for that. Um, but most of all, I'm praying that you'll feel the power of the re resurrection today, that you'll know that there is incredible um, power available to you because Jesus defeated sin and death. And because of that, anything and everything can be defeated. Uh, let me pray, and then we'll wrap things up here this morning. Father, we're grateful for the empty tomb. Uh, we, we wish that we could have been there, that we could see it, that we could understand um, with our own minds what took place. Maybe we'd have a different response than, than the disciples did, but, but probably not. <coughs> Father, we, uh, we believe that Jesus came back from the dead. Uh, we have staked uh, not just our eternity uh, on it, not just something far off in the distance, but we stake our everyday lives on the fact <clears throat> that Jesus came back from the dead. Uh, Father, we pray that this morning we would be filled with the joy uh, of his victory, uh, that we would celebrate um, happily and gladly um, as, uh, as we uh, look at the power of life over death that's available in Christ Jesus. Um, thank you so much uh, for the empty tomb, for the love that you have shown to us in Christ, uh, for uh, the difference that he makes in our lives today. It is through the strong, 
powerful, victorious name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. He is risen. He is risen. He is indeed. indeed. Uh, thanks so much for being here this morning. Uh, we'll have uh, another uh, another live stream uh, at 10.30 this morning. Uh, be sure to, uh, to come and join us and invite some friends and family to come along. Uh, we'd love to have people from all over the country, all over the world, uh, worshiping with us. Uh, we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.